Welcome to the last day of September. It's been a ride in this nine month of 2024. Welcome to Jassy, ladies and gentlemen. And our lovely lady of the morning, Olive Imodi, joins us today. Yes. Good morning, ladies. And this green is luscious. Well, it's in celebration of Nigeria's independence, even though there hasn't been much to celebrate. Did you buy Can we use the word commemoration? Commemoration, more like Did you buy your Ashwabi? No, I've been looking for one unity fabric. I don't think it has gotten to Lagos market yet. Lagos market. Mm. Wow. No, it's probably it has gotten to, to Lagos, but it's in the hands the of the nice kimono of it, you know, to cover the scenes of the Nigeria. Wow, Lola's wow. on a roll. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't think that the, the, the <laughs> fabric is going to get as much support. As, I mean, people are looking to eat food. It's not fabric that they're thinking My about sister, right now. speak for yourself. There are people who are planning for this fabric. No, no, by the and time you see the people shocking. planning that this fabric has already made its way into Lagos, oh, but it's in the hands of that made that made. Now, we don't get those with our way they don't send that to from Abuja already. Have. As in in batches. We, we, we'll see what happens tomorrow, guys. Yes, they say it's October 1st. Yes. Okay, let's start. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I want to ask you guys, yeah, please. before Lola jumps in, mm -hmm. <laughs> what was your highlight of the month? Of September. This month? Yeah. Oh, Even though yes. I'm the one who put the question, I don't have an answer. I have, like, <laughs> shocking I, I think uh, I think for I have an answer. Um, okay, go ahead. Really start. I moved houses this month. Oh, yes, yes, I mean, yes, congratulations. So anybody yes. who house wants in Lagos, yes, especially Lagos. as a single woman, yes. we need to give you a yes. lot. Honestly, yes. I, I am so grateful that that was able to happen because, like you mentioned, it's really a tough call house Absolutely. hunting in Lagos. Gosh. The the rent has skyrocketed. Like if you're currently in a house that is nice, please stay in your house. Don't fight with your landlord yeah. because outside is not smiling. Okay. So being able to get a house that and, you like that I like and as a single woman because it, it feels like the past four years have been filled with me moving houses and hearing stories like oh sorry we don't give a house to women oh we don't give where's your husband ah no so all those conversations I'm really glad that in this particular search it was different from the last one I mm. didn't see as much of in fact nobody asked me oh fantastic. you know if oh you're a single woman hey. but the last time yeah. I saw help Wow. So, yes. I remember. Yeah. I feel like there's some progress that's been made in that regard. That's Thanks a good one. That, that's a, that's yeah. a reason to celebrate this September. Yeah. Catherine. I, I think for me, uh, it will have to be a lump of all the women we've brought on the show. Mm. Yeah. Because we have learned so much. I personally have learned so much. When we have guests sit on, on a chair here who share a table with us on Jasiri, mm -hmm. there is no way you yeah. will not leave this mm. conversation, this table impacted. Absolutely. So I think for all the women, from the women who have spoken about seeking women getting their rightful place in politics from women who are pushing the envelope and for also women widowhood look at uh, Sheon, Sheon Fumi for example so every woman who has sat here has impacted something to me that has stayed with me and inadvertently just changed the way I used to look at things I mean for the better yeah that's a powerful yeah. testament yeah. to what happens on Jesse yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I would say September for me was a month of, let's say, ease a little, because August came to me very hard. A lot of negatives I recorded in August, mm. and um, you know I had a lot of trepidation when I was entering into September. And um, but the month has um, coasted well. I have found some kind of balance. Mm. I think this month has amplified for me again that life is transient. That means challenges are supposed to run its course yeah. and be on their way. Like uh -huh. cold and cut So the more you know that, you know we've recorded this many times, but yeah. every time we're faced with dire times or hard decisions, you feel as if, oh, oh this is the month that will tank me. Yes. This is the month that everything will just unravel. But you find out that there are always reasons to pivot. So I, I want to believe that no matter what anyone is going through, trust me. It has its own expiry date when that challenge came. That's so right. whether you like it or not, it's going to run, run its, course its course and you're going to be support. fine. And that's what September did for me. And, you know, a combination of everything. And the fact that Tolu was away from all in August, maybe that was why negative things happened. Ah. But now she brought wow. her sunshine with her <laughs> when she came oh, back to hi. work. I and wouldn't even lie, I was us. so happy when she was coming back. Why? Oh, like, that whole gosh was terrible. <laughs> Everything was just like, 
Huh. You need to lose umbrella shower to shield you from this. When she came back, and she I was kind of happy. Actually, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, work-wise, everything was like uh, 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 on skittles, but you know. Because we like were here I and we it. did it and we're running the end wow. of September. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. I'm watching <laughs> from cheek to cheek. Uh, as <laughs> a, no, 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 no. These ladies deserve these ladies <laughs> deserve a round of applause. Then we what was my highlight? As just man, this month kicked mm -hmm. our uh, butts. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy to say uh, Jasiri has triumphed. We've come out on top. We mm -hmm. are continuing to fine tune what we yeah. do and mm -hmm. make it better. Uh, personally, it's just been another month of work and work okay. and work. Yes, yeah. it will be for you because you were away in August. You know, I, I, I don't know if we can really, as Nigerians, separate ourselves from work. Even when you're holidaying, just you try. That's but, not me and you people. Though. When I'm no, on this holiday, one, this one blanks out. Like, I'm probably one of the few people she talks to. No. You that work so hard. No, 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 no. I mute. I'm sorry to my HR and everybody. I mute all news central information. I don't want to see the news. I don't follow news pages because it depresses me. Ooh. The news is depressing. Not, yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to be on holiday. I'll be outside the country and then be seeing mm. five people more that. No, no, I don't want to see that. And she's very right. It's just she's like, very right. because we are, we are faced and confronted with this reality every, every month, every morning. Day. I'm reviewing the papers. I can't. So you, you know, intentionally remove yes, yourself. Yes, I intentionally. Yourself. If I mistakenly open Instagram and I see one news story, I'm shutting it down. I don't want to don't see want anything. To see. I, wish, oh. I wish mothers can just do that. But even if you're on holiday, oh. trust me, my son was home last week for nothing. Mommy, my stomach was and the teacher too called me. We have been medicating. He has really pooped and he's looking away. <laughs> well, I had to tell, just you. In fact, I had to pull her out from work to go and pick him up because I was so busy that last week. And so what happened I saw when he my son <laughs> stay happily at home, enjoying the ambience. Oh, he stayed in his room, watched his, uh, all those funny cartoons and... He had a jolly good time, and he went to school without force yesterday. He's in so he's so blessed. No, yeah, that means he will act. He, he has had midterm break within midterm break because in another two weeks he'll be midterm break. Your son is planning for you. You just don't uh, know. Listen, it. I know. He, he, he knows what's going on. So, She's the one who has not caught up. No, I know. Soft. I know. All I right, so, pattern, so, so ladies, I want us to, and I also say September is a difficult time for my family, and we survived this September. Mm. Unfortunately, I don't know what it is. September is. September, many years apart, is when I lost my first sister and my second sister. So wow. September is a very tough month. He's a month that shakes us, but I thank God that we've seen the end of it, and I thank God that oh, like my that. sister oh, says our local. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not a good person, but anyway. <laughs> ladies, we were going to get into confessions for the weekend because yeah. uh, we know some people who look to look like they need to confess. Hey, but, God. Hold it. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. protest? <sighs> No, seriously. Okay, let me give you guys the details since no, the ladies don't seem to be ready no, for another no. protest. It's great to be looking at another week ahead of us, a week that also brings Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary. 64 years. Mm. Oh, God. Uh, but also, unfortunately, brings yeah. with it protests that have been called for October 1st, which is tomorrow. Now, New Central reported last night that a number of organizations formed a coalition and met last night in regards to the protest. They have declared October 1st as National Day of Survival to protest the hunger and hardship in Nigeria, as well as to demand freedom for detained hashtag and bad, bad governance protesters and all victims of state repression. Now, you can see the organizations that are involved in the movement will also see their demands shortly. But ladies, are we, well, when I say we, I don't necessarily mean us on this table, but do you mm. think Nigerians have another protest in them? at this time. I think there are about 12 or so demands. We'll mm. keep seeing them on the screen. You know, the, the, the recurrence of this protest is another problem. Because every time you do protest and it does not achieve what you want it to achieve, it waters down the effect. Even mentally, the people are no longer geared. Half of the people I have spoken to in recent times, do you know what everybody says? Mm -hmm. I just want to survive. Yeah. That's it. I just want to keep my family together. Yeah. And now we'll be on the streets all these activists that come out and say we are fighting for a cause. I, the first one that happened, mm -hmm. it was because there was no unity of purpose. Yeah. You are, you're, you're, you're going for a protest. We're thinking as we're going. There wasn't like, oh, this is exactly what we're asking for. Yeah. Every pocket of organization had different... But that's, a, that's changing with this mm -hmm. one. We've seen the number of organizations involved Coming in together, this. except Coming there together. is... That's why I said unity of purpose. If Nigerians really want to see the change they want, mm -hmm. even these organizations have to convince the people that truly, this time around, mm -hmm. you are doing this for us, truly. 
Not that somebody is going to call you at the back and in another two days, which we know, we predict it every time. Oh, they will call them into a, a discussion and they'll say, oh, we're giving the government some time. Yeah. That's something more this. like NLC than the civil, civil organizations. And to be fair, many people would argue that civil organizations have done more, mm. right, in, in ensuring that they're fighting for the rights of people. Is NLC that we know that sometimes when they call strikes, mm. people don't take them as seriously because mm -hmm. before you know they've called off the strike temporarily. But with the strike, I think it's a catch-22 because... What we've seen happen is Nigerians are discontent. Yeah. They're, not, they're not happy. People mm -hmm. can't make ends meet. So on the one hand, it's like a situation of flogging a child and asking the child not to cry. On the one hand, yeah. people are discontent. Yeah. People are hungry. People are angry. They yeah. want to go out to the streets to protest. But if they go out to protest, they could be arrested and charged for treason. Mm -hmm. So it's literally beating a child and asking the child not to cry. And I honestly don't know what to expect tomorrow. What I do yeah. know is that if we do not see a large turnout of people at the protest, it would not be because they are not in support of the protest. Yeah. It would be because they are afraid for their lives. They are afraid mm -hmm. for, of what being charged. Happens, you know, after. The, the effect, fear mongering, yeah. you know, is a tactic that will be used to suppress people from coming out. So I don't think it's because people are happy. You know, to the MBS released rates, uh, the, the unemployment rates for Q3, Q1 to Q3, and you see the un unemployment rates. I mean, people are arguing that this is not reflective of the current reality in ground. Nigeria. People are just, you know, the same glossing thing over the issue. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they really say that for the past two months, inflation has actually seen a decrease. And Nigerians yeah. are like, eh? where? Yeah. I'm not feeling it in my pocket. I'm not feeling it. A bag of rice market. is 105. Inflation? No, 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 don't say it and, it, and, it, and it's going. And it's going because we're approaching um, the festive period and then you everybody... You better be saving to buy before Christmas. You understand. Anything you don't buy today in Nigeria, the price will triple by tomorrow. Yes. So buy what you can today because today. you can't guarantee what the how price will be. How many things Okay, so can we buy don't buy electricity. I was saying this morning that the Minister of Power, uh, Professor Adibai, says that now 40% of Nigerians have 20 hours of electricity or more. 40, not half, mm. not 60, not 70, 40. not 80, mm. not 90. He wants mm. us to clap that 40% of Nigerians have 20 hours or more of light. Yeah. Again, I go back to what Kate, H uh, Kate Henshaw tweeted, yeah. which is trying to make sense. Why are we banding? Just give yeah. everybody light 20, 24 do. hours Meanwhile, of light and let us pay what we consume. It's also likely to increase because as at last time, yes, we saw it. electricity subsidy. Band a. Yeah. So, so everyone's already like thinking God. I even think that listen. now it's band A, band B. Because if you're everybody's tariff in their houses, you will notice that you're, you're getting more light but you're running faster on your meter. Yes. That means there are so many things they do underhand in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Like me, if you're going to do something, then face up to the people and do it straight and direct. October. Don't go through corners. Don't cut through corners. Don't make us pay when we don't know we're paying. October 1st in Nigeria used to be a day people look forward to <gasps> yeah. as children. March pass. You wear your we uniform, for you would go school. to the stadiums, you would do March pass. You will, when you sing the national anthem as a child, you they would believe. national anthem. The yeah. then national anthem, you would believe in what you're singing. Now everything has gone to the dogs. Uh, oh, the 1st of October nowadays seems like a heavy burden, like a day. It's almost like a funeral you don't want to attend. Everybody is, is a poussière, is what? Uh. It's French. Oui, oui. It has gone bad. On ne fatigue. We're tired. I know. I'm tired. It's fatigue. I'm tired. Now I'm tired. We are, we are. <laughs> See, on the poussière finished, we are exhausted. Dead, uh -huh. We are exhausted as Nigerians. Yeah. And I don't know what else the government can demand from us as a people. Lola said some people just want to be able to feed their family, yeah. look after their family. Yeah. People are joining monies now to be able to buy a bag of rice yes, so they can divide among themselves. And still, in all of that, the Nigerian in us will find ways to be happy. But the question is, will Nigerians come out tomorrow? Yeah. How long will the protest last? There are so many questions ahead of tomorrow's announced protest. Stay with News Central for all the latest before and during. But as for Jasiri, we'll take a break now. When we're back, we we're going to look deeper into the rising cases of rape and sexual and gender-based violence in our society. Stay tuned. I know it's heavy for a Monday, but stay with us. Welcome back to Jasiri. Don't forget to join the conversation via social media platforms. We are at New Central. 
TV. So today we confront a critical issue that demands our collective attention. That sexual and gender-based violence, SGBV, it's time to shatter the silence surrounding this pervasive problem. Globally, would you believe a staggering 35% of women have experienced physical or sexual violence at the hands of intimate partners or non-partners? According to the World Health Organization, WHO, now in Nigeria, 31% of women have suffered physical violence since 15 years of age. Most disturbingly, the majority of perpetrators are intimate partners. Worldwide, 30% of women in relationships report lifetime experiences of physical or sexual violence by their partners. Together, let's delve into solutions, support systems, and strategies to combat SGBV. Your voices, your experiences, and perspectives are crucial in shaping our discussion. Now, this morning, Joining us in this conversation to help break the silence is Barrister Olumide Karede Omosebi, lawyer and founder of Genosis Health Initiative. Welcome to Jasper. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome so much. He was listening to all of the behind the scenes conversations. Um, but there's a particular case I know you're working on right now. Yeah. And I stumbled across um, the story in particular when it was reported by a Punch uh, reporter. And it's about um, calls for like fashion shows and kids' fashion shows. And parents are sending their kids to these camps. And then it's now coming out that the person involved is actually molesting and possibly raping some of these children and even women um, who come for these auditions. Can you briefly take us through this story, as much of it as you can? Uh, well, the, it's a matter that's already in court, uh, but um, as little as I can tell you, uh, because once the matter is in court, you mm -hmm. have to stand down, yeah. is that um, it's called uh, the Lagos Fashion uh, Festival. That was the advert on uh, Instagram. And some of these uh, parents, uh, over the course of the third term break, thought that, oh, well, we are here for holidays. Mm. Uh, some children that wanted to go to modeling, he advertised also that he had a, a Netflix contract to shoot a movie and, you know, was looking for roles. So actresses came, up and coming models came, and so for the children, uh, he started uh, with, um, I think it's uh, some are eight years old, My seven, There's eight, eight year years old. There's an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, a 14-year-old. Yes, all the way to 18, 19. Uh, so uh, they started coming, and um, what he would say is, uh, let's see a love scene. <laughs> so that romance scene, uh, there was some... Uh, girls, he actually defiled one. We have um, the hospital reports. Uh, I think she's about nine. She's about nine. And uh, we have about a total of nine to ten children who came forward, a uh, total of about five models. And a particular model was actually raped on set. Eh? Yes. Like when people are recording? You no, know, but you see, his set, he is the only one oh. in. So he locks the door and tells you to, you know, okay, um, want to see a romance scene. At times he tells you to sit on his lap and, you know, they see that there's something wrong. But he now tells you that, you know, that Netflix Contra, thing that yeah. uh, we need to be able to, there was one told to take her clothes off, she refused. Uh, you know, he would say, okay, sit down there, then uh, do the love scene, he'll pat you on the back, then, you know, molesting both children and adults. So by the time we took up the case, we found out that people had already reported him on Instagram. Mm. <laughs> that was before this new set. Mm. And some punch had already done something on him mm. before. So this yeah, is the yes, second see. time wow. that punch will be reporting on the mm. same God. person. All right. I'm, 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 me, I'm curious. Yeah. Because that story has been it's been he has featured in the story before punch did a, yeah. an expose on him now i'm asking why is it so easy i know that guys listen i know that it's, parents always want the children to be occupied like do something with your time learn a skill you know go to camp mm -hmm. but my own is that why is it so easy for parents to drop their children at a camp. Okay, you go to the camp, you drop a child. Do you ask questions? Do you ask to see somebody? Who am I handing over my child okay. to? What's the brief like? 
this is a 36 year old man mm -hmm. a 36 year old man i, do, I don't understand alamin i think that's his name yeah, Al Al uh, yeah. and um final he has alleged say alleged to have raped the nine-year-old and so yeah. how has this continued for so long so, first of all you, you take someone to a set there's no script prior there's no, I mean, do you just go and say, make the environment? So, sorry, he even yes. told one of the girls that she should pretend like she's in a kidnapper's den and resist yeah. him, but not resist too much. So, he does the romancing thing, then he does the pretend he I'm trying to, to force you. Lie down, look up as if you've been yeah. kidnapped, then he lays on top of you. So, it's not actually a camp, it's a day thing. So uh, you drop your kids and then you come back. Then he has an accomplice who is also a woman that poses as a parent. So when she says she volunteers to be there, so the mothers are so a comfortable. bit comfortable, but at least uh, there's a man, there's a woman, there are men here. There's, and um, then where a lot of this happened was when he now announced a three-day intensive Camp. Uh, so it was the day before. It wasn't a lodging. lodging. It wasn't going as a boarding facility. Yeah. So you drop them in the yeah, morning. So it was when he now announced that they were going to, you know, the the schedule of the Netflix movie has moved up. That it has to really do that. So he tells you that they will build a profile for your kids. He actually made billboards with some of the pictures. Yes. So uh, we've seen billboards in Lagos yes, in this particular case. Yes, um, especially. So you see, at the end of the day, in a sensible situation, you should be able to send your kids to camp. Mm. It's summer holiday. They can't yeah. be home all through. Mm. They need to be engaged. But it's unfortunate that you know they, they have been taken advantage mm. of. I think that our focus more should be on the the not not on the victims in this case or the survivors, the parents mm. or the children. I think that we should throw the blame where it lies with the man who is alleged to have committed this crime. Mm. Because if people entrust their child to you, I don't think that anybody would not have done their due diligence. Yes, there are some careless people. But I think that the blame is with this person who has presented a false image. But we'll come back to talk about that and much later I want us to talk about how we can navigate it, navigate conversations about sexual abuse to yes. make it survival based mm -hmm. as opposed to us thinking about, you know, in this case the parents or the children. But our correspondent covered an event this weekend and the event was focused on this very issue. Uh, he spoke to a survivor of domestic and sexual violence and here's what she had to say. So this same guy that impregnated me, still beating me, molesting me. I will still call my mom, told my, tell my mom that, see, oh, mom, see what is going on. My mom said, there's nothing she can do about it, that I should just endure. I give birth to first child, second child, third child, fourth child for the same man. Why he still continue to abuse me sexually? I don't know how to say, Dom I will call it domestic violence. So I called my mom again that I have given birth to this person. Please help me. I don't, I, I don't want to die in this domestic violence. My mom will say there is nothing she can do about it. That, uh, that is what I should face. That, uh, that is, uh, they call it in Yoruba, that is what I need to face. Her mom says that's what she needs to face. Ileo call the call. What? what we'll that? take a quick break. When we come back, the conversation continues. <laughs> You're watching Just Siri as we look at fighting the rising cases of rape and sexual and gender-based violence in our society. Uh, just before we, uh, the break, we heard from a victim of, um, of domestic and sexual violence. And I want us to hear the last part of what she has to say before we get back into our conversation. Because unfortunately, her experience is not unique. And it also shows that, that there are a number of issues when it comes to addressing this. So let's take a look at what she has to say. He wants to have sex with me. I say no. And that I will be very tired because he's not doing anything. Even in front of the children, he do beat me, to the extent that the children even know what is going on, and they do always talk about it. But I just have to tell them that they should not talk about it because that drama is really affecting my children. For them to be seeing their dad eating me, whenever I want to have sex with me, if I said no, he will beat me. Even while he was sleeping with me in front of my children, he will 
even most especially that my my first book, that my first book. I know. So I know they know everything. They know a lot, especially that my first book. They know a lot. I they know how their dad have been maltreating me. They know everything. Barrister, yeah. she yeah. she spoke about. Two, I took those two because there are two issues. Yeah. Her mom telling her you're pregnant now, and as you were telling us, part of the reason she got pregnant was the first time was because she was raped because the mother used to beat her and send her out of the house. So she was raped in that situation. Then when she told her mother she was pregnant, the mother sent her back out again. Then now we have one, two, three, four children. So that's one. Then two, she's talking about also the exposure her kids are having to to her being in a sexually and domestically violent situation, and it's also impacting them as well. So can you speak to these two issues when it comes to fighting rape and SGBV in Nigeria? Okay, so uh, rape only applies when you are 18 years and above. So when you are below 18, it's called defilement. defilement. Well, some lawyers, we had a lawyer recently yeah, who said that you know. we shouldn't, defilement, it doesn't show like the strength of yeah. rape when no, it's a child. It does. There's some people it who does. want to change that technology. It does. Defilement is life in prison. Okay. Rape is life in prison. Okay. So defilement makes you know it is a minor. Mm -hmm. So if I say ah, he raped me, you might think it's an adult. Yeah. But when you defilement sparks more outrage mm -hmm. because you now know that it's someone below 18. 18. So um, the, the problem, for example, men that beat their wives uh, has been its conclusive research and men that grew up watching their fathers beat their mothers, their mothers while growing up. So that is how abuse is passed from generation to generation. When you have a violent home, when you have an abusive home, check the children. If you have three, one or two yeah. will become their father's son or their mother's uh, child. child. Uh, she, we rescued her about four years ago. I think she heard me on uh, my program and uh, took down my number. Called me that she has nowhere to go. Uh, she's not married to this guy. The guy had started uh, defiling her. I think she was 16 or 15 when her mother was uh, always, the anger would be beating and then drive you out of the house. So uh, that night, she was actually outside the house by marketplace not far from the house just waiting by the stall probably waiting that the mother would allow her in when this gentleman just saw her and um, you know saw there was nobody around and took advantage that led to her getting pregnant and when she started noticing she went to her mother. The mother drove her out again to go and meet a man that she did not know. So eventually she looked for the man and said, I'm pregnant. So the man was squatting with someone and then she had to stay there. And, uh, you know, the man had his way. Now, the man has never been responsible for any of those children. She would sweep. Uh, and do you know that this girl is a scholarship student? Talked, so in the interview, she talked about wanting to be a lawyer. Yes, she, she was actually to to on scholarship. Oh she was that brilliant. Wow. So you, you know when I'm, like uh, I, 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 I'm listening and I'm, I'm totally out of sorts because the prevalence of this is what worries me now. Oh yes. It's no longer like something we talk about at the backside. Yeah. It is so prevalent now that rape is on the front burner and cases of SGBV in Nigeria. Why is it so prevalent now? Because everywhere I turn, there are different cases you hear on a daily basis mm -hmm. and every story more harrowing than the, mm -hmm. the last. Yeah. And you're like, okay, what is really happening? Is it because you just spoke about the law and the extreme consequence of being, if you are found guilty, yeah. you would go life imprisonment and this and that. Is it that these consequences are not gotten to? Because I do not know when a, a society will get this decadent yeah. that is no longer something we can even speak and not feel ashamed of. Is it that they don't get these consequences? Or because I do not know why it's still this prevalent. So, um, 
it's not just now. It has always been. But now it's coming out, what has been concealed, mm -hmm. usually settled by family members. Mm -hmm. For every, a lot of families, you see a child that you are just told you are related to, but they won't tell you how you are related to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually it's either by incest or rape. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just know the child, you don't know the mother, they just say, oh, that's your cousin. But nobody tells you the history. Mm -hmm. It's been ongoing for a long time. One in every three children, especially the girl child, will be sexually assaulted, molested, or defiled before the age of 18. And one in every seven boys will be sexually assaulted before the age of 10. So these are not just, these are United Nations figures that, yeah. for Nigeria. Which I expect the problem, to be underreported. Yes. So underreported mm -hmm. that there is no, uh, I run an NGO. We are now sharing our own statistics Data. with the public. The government should be the one sharing statistics with us. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even know how many marriages occur in a local government, mm -hmm. not to talk of how many cases of abuse. In 2016, I think, Shija, S-H-I-J-A, yeah. uh, came and conducted a research in Nigeria, and um, you know that they reported that uh, yearly Nigeria loses between 300 to 350 women to domestic violence and abuse. So people don't know that we buried this year, we buried over 116 women lost to domestic what? violence and 32 <sighs> men lost because it's both ways. Yes, yes, yes. It is. Women kill men. And at times, you know, it's not as if they wake up, but they violate. And what perpetrates it is religion and culture. Mm -hmm. You have people who would tell their religious leaders, it's always the first point of call. They go to pastor, they go yeah. to and say, my husband yeah, beats me, but... and they tell you to pray. Yes. To enter the war, war room. To yeah. enter the war room, and they make you feel like your it's your responsibility. But the issue is that the pastor you are reporting to also beats his wife. Ah. So you are reporting abuse to an, an abuser. abuser. So women who, not to, I know Olive has a question, but towing uh, what you just said, what is the major or the, the wait, wait, is the major, what is the major, if women who kill, like, because um, you obviously you would have gotten to a point where you say, I can't mm. take it anymore. Mm. What's the easiest form that they choose to kill their spouse? Oh, some stuff. You know that almost 80% of women in Kirikiri are there for murder? Yeah. Almost 80% of women, are, they are called crimes of passion. Mm -hmm. You know, passion is uh, another word for jealousy. And uh, some, okay, like uh, Mrs. Adejo, who stabbed the husband because he received a phone call. Okay. She suspected that was, was from a lover. Mm. Uh, some of the women are the abusers. There was one in um, Binui um, that the woman killed the children, three children, and the husband then killed herself. Stabbing now, every, suicide. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember yeah. the name. His name is... Um, uh, uh, I would, I would, I would yeah, remember okay. the name, but the issue is the violence. Everybody had been telling, leave, leave, leave. But for some reason, parents will say, ah, you can't come back home. Ah. Oh, yes. Then religious leaders will say, so the only thing that allows and watches the affliction of the children are people under the influence of religion or culture, hmm. because no animal will watch their offspring. You can't go close to even a chicken that has laid eggs. They won't allow you near their chicks. Mm -hmm. It is only human beings that will see their children being battered, abused, and then will say, let us even apologize to the husband yes. or to the wife. And the problem is that it had been from time immemorial. Our mothers yes. had been victims of abuse our father so it is ah, i went through it 
And you know what's even more painful about it? I think the society, which leads to what I said earlier, that we need to be a society that provides uh, survivor-based approaches to combating yes. this. Because typically, yes. when people are abused, we always make it the fault of the, abu of, of the abuse, oh, yeah. Yeah. as opposed oh, yeah. to putting the blame where it lies with the abuser. A woman why is raped. Did why did yeah, you go why there? Did you go there? Why did you go there? Yeah. Forgetting that somebody can cover from head to toe, in, you know, someone in, even women in, in hijab, hijab have been raped, diapers, unfortunately. In diapers, babies in diapers. Yeah. Exactly. So people suffering dementia, people yeah. who are paralyzed or people disabled. mentally disabled people. And then the society people. shames. I, I think we need to divorce ourselves from shame. They shame women yeah. for making the choice to preserve their out. lives, to leave marriages that are that are you know, toxic. Toxic, toxic and make them feel, ah, you are a divorce. So we need to divorce yeah. ourselves from that stigma. I think the society does have a role to play. There's culture, there's tradition, there's religion, but the society, we all have yeah. a role to play. But yeah. now let's talk about the legal framework that's available. Right. You've been providing services for over two decades, mediation, yeah. you know, representing them in court, just offering help to victims of sexual and gender-based violence. I know that Lagos State, through the domestic and yes. violence sexual yes. response team have done great work but if we look at as a country mm. how far have we come what are the leg what what does the legal framework look like and where are the areas that we're lacking are we serious I see people because you can this. talk about <laughs> no it's true you can talk about a harsh penalty yeah. but before you get to a harsh you penalty get it. you need to have a conviction if we can get those stats back up look at the conviction rates when it comes to this issue yeah are we serious so, rape is even one of the hardest so, uh, yeah yes. but because a couple of Why? years ago to even get a rape kit in a police station do you have a rape was, kit the the first thing about proving rape is the hardest though. is about one of the most difficult because Evidence. women don't go straight to the, the, police hospital or the police or the hospital. They go home. And take a bath. And then they they now start thinking. You mm -hmm. see, you don't blame me a lot because you know if you tell this, they'll say, Why did you go there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did you why so the the mm -hmm. society I married a divorcee, my wife, um, uh, this is um, her second marriage. She was in an abusive marriage. It was so bad that we're still treating the injuries she sustained 27 years ago uh, in the in a marriage now from her first husband. We're still going to do MRIs for her spine. What? Because one time he knocked her over a flower pot, so she landed with her back and the spine shifted. So the issue is. When it started, she went, she was a worker in church, and she had to tell that, listen, the beating is too much, yeah. because everybody has seen her naked in the compound, strip her naked, beat her out, and they said, ah, oh, no, as a worker, you cannot. So when she hinted that she wanted to leave, she was removed as a worker in church, that you cannot be. So they were they, they, to die, oh my God. and so, they do a burial so, for the worker so, and the woman. Uh, that was you're, you're talking about someone who is still alive. Let's go back to the person who died. Yeah. Remember the case of Osina Ching? Yes. yes. Yeah. I was That's one it. of the lawyers then. Yeah. And she had separated one year, three months, but was told to come back because she's a gospel singer. Huh. Which, it's not good for the which church would uh, invite, invite you to you. sing when you are a divorcee. I but the church will invite the man if they're divorced. Is this, you, yes. The church will continue I, to hold I, him up as a pastor or a worker or a minister or yeah. whatever if they're divorced, so, even so, with allegations on so his head. Every time we talk about these things, it's oh. so close to home that I don't want to just talk any longer. Religious organizations do not help people. They, they when I was help. going to leave my marriage at that time, I had to be thinking on a daily basis that is it not better I died than be here, that people would accept me more. Because for me, I'm somebody that all my life I've been in the church. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have circular friends mm -hmm. to even say I would go to. And it wasn't and like the, my own my marriage was violent, violent physically. I was just like in a dead situation. And I wanted to go out. But I was so afraid of the church because at that time when I left, all my friends, their husbands pulled their wives away from me. Yeah, but like you're, you're I was yeah. like going to yeah. them. Yeah. out Perfect. of water. Yeah. And I was just cascading. Every day I was thinking that if I died, or if I killed, if he died. Mm -hmm. Then I came to a realization that, what are you doing? Is it not better to walk out than kill someone? And that's you, because you actually sat down and, and got a grip. 
on the situation. Many people are not afforded that chance. Yes. Look at the lady that you mentioned, Osina. She, she didn't have the chance. She, pro she took herself out of it. But because of societal oh, pressure, pressure. Oh, the because pastor, of church They pressure. would not call you for a, what? They would not even, you, even a divorcee. As I am a divorcee, now some churches will not even give you leadership. Oh, role. absolutely not. But they'll give it to a divorced man. Not actually. You remember there's a pastor that had to leave the church because the wife left him and went to marry another person. Yes. And they told him he He's could not marry. not marry. He had to stay like that. Yes. Until he said, you know, I can't, I would be like this. <laughs> she has gone and, and had children. Yes. I would just, so he had to leave the church to start his own church. Ah. But I want us to still come back to the legal framework yes. because we talked about so, the role that religion plays. Yes. Let's talk about law. So uh, the problem, what I see about law is the several people we have um, arrested. I work hand in hand with the state CID in Panty and the gender uh, at the state command, gender office at the state command. You'll find people, you're about to start prosecution. They just come and say, I don't want to, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, my family, we've decided, you know, uh, if you if he goes to jail, will he change? Uh, let, let's just, they just pull out of court. And without evidence from the person, there mm -hmm. can be no case. So the family, the person and themselves, people have torpedoed down cases. 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 And you start, you cannot finish. And it has always been a, a problem. When someone, OK, uh, three weeks ago, there was a case of defilement in um, Bariga. The land, was it? The, oh, no, that was long, right? The landlord's son. Uh, which they, that, um, there are too they, many landlords. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, police public relations officer said they went there and then nobody was willing to talk to uh, them. This one is even my personal case. And um, she was defiled by five men. What? And the parents were looking for her all through the night until she came back. She was actually taken there by uh, some family friend's daughter oh, who said, escort me somewhere here. So when the father saw her, you know, she wasn't looking. And they had been looking for her. Where did you go? She was quiet. The father now angrily brought out a cane and ah, wanted okay, to weep her because it was like oh. almost to past 12. They had that's been looking really for her. Strong. They had been calling until she now said, OK, let me talk. It was so, so, so. And so that happened. The father was like, ah. following morning, they took her to the police station. She identified all the five. By the time the case got to us, we had said, OK, we'll go to Warif to have medical evidence. Mm -hmm. Next thing, the girl was detained. What? 24 hours after, she changed the story. But defilement meant it was underage. Yes. They are detained they detained an underage child. So they said she said she was afraid to go back home. So I wondered that it was home that brought you that to, the brought police her station. to the police station. So how would the people that actually wanted justice for you now be? Wanted and she just think that nothing happened. So law enforcement agents as well are called people in So this. when the medical report came out, there was aggressive defilement. She had tears. But the girl is insisting that nobody Touch touched us. her. So the medical report is saying one thing, and then law enforcement is, uh, is uh, a big problem. Ah. A big problem. Because a lot of them are not trained in gender issues. Yes. In, yeah. in I thought Lagos State was supposed to have a gender desk at every place. Yes. Mm -hmm. But even not... they, at times, you have problems. Women shaming women. Of course. Yes. Have you been to the police station? It's, um, what's the name of this in Alimo Shaw? A lady called during my show and said that when she goes to report, she is locked up. So I had to go. I said, go and report again. She didn't want to go because she had just gotten took, out, took her children and disappeared. I said, go, go, go back there. And uh, she went. And then she called me that, did I not tell you? They locked up So again. immediately I, we had some volunteers there. I said they should go. And I myself, my office is in Yaba. I drove down. Uh, it was like... Michael Schumacher, because I wanted to see her. So when see, I yeah, got there so. and I saw her behind the counter, I almost brought down the, yeah. I went to the DPO, I went to, you know, it was terrible. And one woman. This is woman, a police station in Yaba, yeah, right? Not in Yaba, Alimosho. 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 
And the woman who was there was those um, that would not wear earrings, mm -hmm. that would not wear, and said, honor your husband, uh, your husband. submit to. That's the person manning the debt. That so, was, uh, we, we don't have time, I'm so yeah, sorry, but I need to ask one question. I need an answer in one minute, because I think yeah. I find this part of your work quite mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. The fact that mm -hmm. you work with JSS1 students yeah. uh, up to SS3, oh, yeah. and you're working with them to be able to recognize the signs of abuse. Uh, and also yes, I think I brought some but of the in just one minute, uh, Barrister, yeah. what have you learned while doing this? What have you learned? Because I think it's important that people realize... Kids are, like she was talking yeah. about, the lady we heard, her yeah. kids are witnessing this. Yes. She has boys, they're more likely to end up being violent but, abusers in yeah. their own oh, yeah. relationship. Of the kids you've been mentoring and talking to, what kind of stories are they sharing? Because oh, I yeah. know many of them are, are they aware? victims. And I think we also okay. need to equip them on what to do if they he get does that So as well. that is why we share this pamphlet, to let them be able to identify abuse. Because abuse at times does not start out as abuse. Yes. So to identify abuse, child sex education is very important. It's very. But people don't want to agree because they think it's only about sex. Yeah. You, and it is not even about sex. It's not. It's just about, your body. yes, your body, where if anybody touches, it's tantamount to abuse. You yeah. know we had about a GS2 girl who had aborted twice. Huh? Yes, we GS2, have. GS2, that's yes. what, 11, 12, 13, yes, no more 12, than 13? Yes, 12. We've had a girl who already had a child in for Jim. her father. Hmm? We've had, in Ajirami, we had um, a woman uh, who had two children for her own mother, for his mother. She had been defiling him since he's he was so 16, her own son. So by 21, they already had two kids. Hold on, oh please. My God. 21, this child was sleeping with his mother. No, his mother the was mother molesting him. Had been the, the mother molesting was molesting him since he was 16. And so by we twice. got there her child yes, yes we got there when he was 21 and People they already had two children, children oh together at, at jeremy Feluju. so the issue here is that children are the victims absolutely yeah. absolutely are the primary victims of any abuse you find out one in every three children especially mm. the girl child and uh, what we want is the government, they're doing, a, when you say domestic and sexual violence agency under Madame Titi Viper, they are trying. They're mm. trying. Yeah. Oh, they are doing, they are doing a lot. But another angle that I'm hoping but, that I wish they could do is to, for us to have, you know, child social services, uh, mm. child, I, I forgot what it's called. Like shelters? Uh, yeah, there shelters. Are some shelters. There are some shelters, shelters but it's but not enough. They're not yeah, enough. I don't just shelters, but like a system that ensures that some of these children can be taken from their parents and put in other social oh, services. But, yeah, child yeah, child yeah, child but, services but the issue saying. here are usually the parents. Yeah. Who don't want? I don't want my child there. Uh, so the, no, the government should be able to take them away. Yes. Yes. Best, 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 see three lawyers sitting on the back. The we have to go in Nigeria. Unfortunately. Will be a terrible experience if it is not let, let, oh, you let, can't, we you have can't to wrap things up yeah, there will be a secondary there conversation there will be a secondary yes, conversation we're not done, sir. It, it feels like we're just scratching the surface as it is right now the stories as Lola was saying from one to the next are horrifying no, and empowering no. but it is our responsibility to shine light into those dark places and into the recesses of our society and make it for everyone ladies and gentlemen it's a wrap for today Lola I can't. It